With traditional brain retraction, brain usually leaks around the retractor, visualization is limited, can cause target shift, usually larger craniotomy are required, and retraction injury is possible. The elliptical shape of the VBUS Mini allows for a less invasive procedure, greatly reduces white matter damage, improves working channels, can accommodate guidance system pointers for target accuracy, avoids target shifts, allows easier positioning, and reduces surgical time. The VBUS Mini is the first smallest clear brain access device that presents a large enough working channel to be useful in neurosurgery. The VBUS Mini can be easily advanced toward the lesion. The transparency of the wall allows constant monitoring of the surrounding structures and the elliptical shape allows the instruments to be manipulated in all three directions, either laterally or up and down, giving a so-called three degrees of freedom. The VBUS Mini is the largest clear device that can fit through a 11 mm diameter burrow. It is half the size of the current smallest VBUS model. It is a truly minimal invasive profile allowing surgical manipulation within the channel. The narrow channel allows the passage of an endoscope in a single chamber for maximum visualization rather than using multi-compartmental sheath within the channel for surgical instrument insertion. The larger endoscopes can have a cross-sectional area of 50 mm square, which is close to the cross-sectional area of the VBUS Mini. However, because of the cylindrical shape of the channel, working through an endoscopic sheath makes movement on the instrument very difficult. The smooth tip of the introducer allows gentle splitting on the white matter and very gentle advancement without any further damage or transaction on the white matter is a truly minimal invasive surgical device which can be used for a wide variety of procedures. The design of VBUS Mini offers clear advantages. It allows the passage of a standard ventricular catheter and shunts. It allows the passage of small instruments to grasp tissue for biopsy. It can be used to remove intraventricular tumors and most importantly will allow irrigation fluid to flow out thus preventing excessive intraventricular pressure to build up. It can be used to remove intracerebral hematomas. A standard sucker can be used for the liquefied portion, while a standard aspirator can be used for the more acute hematoma. The VBUS Mini comes in two different sizes, a shorter one, 5 cm, and the longer version, 7 cm, according to the depth of the lesion. The VBUS Mini consists of an introducer and a working channel. The introducer presents a round, smooth tip and is very gentle while inserting into the brain. It can be secured into the working channel and locked in place with a locking mechanism. The VBUS Mini is significantly smaller than the regular standard VBUS. The VBUS Mini can be used for a wide variety of pathologies, including hemorrhage, intracerebral hematomas, abscesses, intraventricular hemorrhage, intraventricular tumors, colloid cyst, introduction of catheters and shunts, and also for biopsy. In a standard transcortical approach, the skin is inside for 3 cm in a linear incision. A self-retaining retractor is inserted. A 2 cm diameter craniotomy is performed. The craniotomy can be slightly larger than the size of the tube to allow lateral to lateral or medial to lateral movements. The dura is carefully detached and completely exposed. The dura is incised in a curvilinear fashion and reflected laterally. And the cortex is exposed. The cortex could be incised either through a gyrus or through a sulcus. 
If a gyrus incision is selected, the incision is linear and is dissecting blindly to provide an initial dissection for the introduction of the Vivas Mini. If the sulcus incision is selected, the sulcus is dissecting under visualization, which could be endoscopic or microscopic, and approximately from 1 cm in length and all the way down to its fundus, where finally the corticectomy is performed, avoiding any possible vessels that can be present in that location. The trajectory for the tubular system is checked for accuracy with neural navigation devices, a pointer is inserted into the tube and visualized on the neural navigation unit. After selecting optimal trajectory with the neural navigation device, the tubular device, including the introducer and the working channel, are inserted into the brain along the predefined trajectory. The extension arm can be attached to the working device before insertion into the brain. Once in place, the working channel is secured to the retractor system and the snake arm is locked to a Mayfield or to any other head clamp to secure its position and impede any kind of lateral movement. A 1.5 cm craniotomy is usually enough, but sometimes a 2 cm craniotomy could be effective in presence of a bigger lesion. The introducer and the working channels are inserted together into the brain according to the predefined trajectory. And finally, when the target is reached, the introducer is retracted and the system can be locked to the extension arm. The extension arm can be locked after insertion or before insertion. The pointer is used again to check one more time the accuracy and positioning. Surgical tools are inserted into the working channel and the elliptical shape of the device allows for surgical manipulation a bimanual dissection. Two tools can be simultaneously inserted into the working channel and can both reach the target for an optimal surgical manipulation. The endoscope could be inserted for improved visualization and the size of the working channel will allow surgical manipulation with the micro tools simultaneously to the endoscope. So after the lesion is removed, while retracting the working channel, hemostasis is reached within the resection cavity with the standard techniques. The transparency of the walls allows to check perfect hemostasis along the wall of the trajectory. The extension arm is detached from the working channel. Working channel is retracted and the brain gets back to its original shape. The extension arm, which locks in place the working channel, can be detached either before or after the retraction of the working channel from the parenchyma.